Hi everyone. So this is a presentation, an introduction to the book Industrial Robotics Technology, um, written by myself, Gunnar Bomsche, and uh, available now or shortly via some online bookstores in Sweden and Scandinavia, like Ad Libris, Bocus, and uh, possibly others as well. Uh, the publisher is Student Literatur. The background to the book is that uh, I started out the summer last year, 2020, 2022, to translate and update my old book in Swedish, which was called Industri Industrial Robotechnik, and um, write it in English. But uh, then I found that major part had to be rewritten, and uh, after writing and testing the first chapter, uh, the work and project started to write the book took off in October last year, 2022, and uh, along the way the ambush ambition grew and the uh, deadline was set till the end of March 2023 for the text and the complete um, book, so to say, with figures a month later. And um, after that some final review and editing it was made before printing the book um, and, and make it come true, so to say. But given that, um, I had to make a lot of priorities, what to include, include and what not to include, so to say, and left some parts for uh, a future edition. And um, But I will mention that in the end of this talk. So about the book and content. So, and target group. Uh, the target group mainly is for uh, uh, as a textbook for uh, courses in automation and uh, robot technology um, applied to uh, manufacturing and production of products, so to say, uh, in various ways. It could also be industrial management courses or programs on levels like uh, bachelor or master level then on mas master level complemented with additional parts from say for example papers or, or, or similar things uh, within selected areas uh, by the teacher um, the structure of each capture, capture is that in the end there is a short list of uh, future reading um, uh, related to the chapter, not many, a handful in most cases, um, to give some ideas about where to find more about the topic. And then the content is uh, structured in 11 chapters, as listed here, and I will go through them very shortly uh, from now on. So the first one, historical perspective and trends, is a typical or classical description of actually uh, the concept of robots uh, from um, the past centuries ago uh, up till now uh, and uh, the development of industrial robots from the 1950s, first implementations during the 1960s and then the evolution of industrial robots on all the way with some um, major parts of the say until present day. Um, typically, I mean things like the, the first um, all-electric and microprocessor control robot from ASEA, now ABB Robotics, um, the Puma robot, uh, the Delta robot, and so forth. And the typical applications of those uh, robots. Um, some notes on the advantages of using robots in automation and um, some applications from the early days focusing on things like materials handling, manufacturing processes, operations like uh, uh, arc welding, spot welding and uh, assembly processes. And some notes on ongoing and future developments. So it's a kind of review about the whole area, so to say. The second uh, chapter relates to general concepts and terms. Um, in a way, I would say that the first chapter is more or less an update and, and a translation of 
the same chapter in the old book, more or less, because very little has happened, so to say, from that kind of perspective. The same, more or less, in this chapter, because the terms are more or less the same, and the concepts are the same, but rewritten in a way. And also one section is added that describes the design and implementation briefly um, to to make a system, a robot system um, for um, a company, a corporation in robotics automation. And the purpose of that is twofold. Uh, I found it feasible in this way to introduce the activities in designing and implementing robot systems early on in the book, because some of the concepts and, and way of thinking um, was needed in, in later chapters before this was actually uh, taken on board in a later chapter. And also to describe the terms often used in this kind of process. And then there are a selection of terms that are somewhat limited uh, but should be enough for understanding most parts related to the book and also based on the terminology defined in um, an ISO standard of this. The next uh, chapter, the third chapter, Mechanical Structure, uh, is uh, rewritten and updated from the similar chapter in the Swedish version. Um, include things like two center point degrees of freedom, singularities, joints and links, and then the different types of serial robot arms, the different types of the principle behind parallel robots in general structure. That is, for most part, rewritten and um, updated and added in relation to the old Swedish version. And uh, finally, the restructure and some considerations related to that. Now, from this on, except for one chapter, most of the parts are new, so to say, for this book, compared to the older one, or heavily rewritten. So, the fourth chapter is Industrial Robotics, uh, Robots in Automation. Then the fifth chapter is Applications and Processing operations. So I divided those things into two different chapters. So the fourth chapter is related to the robot, the fifth chapter is related to the system. So about this chapter now, fourth one, um, lay out the principles of applying robots for different operation, operating conditions and manufacturing processes. And in that perspective also, in a way, related to the different performances or characteristics that uh, sh that are needed or, or wanted, so to say, for a robot for a certain application. And uh, then there are a few notes about safety related functions with reference to ISO standards in this chapter. Could have been um, in the next chapter about the system, but I put it here anyway, because my notes relates to the robot in the sense. Um, I, it could be expanded in a way, but uh, there was a time constraint uh, when uh, reading the, when writing the book, uh, and I decided not to write more than necessary related to safety. And, um, I thought about this for a while, but also that there is quite a lot of literature out there and papers related to safety, which could be complemented to any course of the say given by teachers. And finally, some trends related to robots. The fifth chapter is about applications and processing operations. So this chapter is related to the to the um, uh, typical operating parameters to consider when. Um, designing, setting up a system and uh, selecting a robot. And also I add on supporting equipment examples such as feeding devices, grippers, manufacturing process equipment and sensors relating to the, um, to the uh, design of any robot system, so to say. And applications including materials handling, welding, dispensing, machining and material removal, removal assembly and collaboration. 
the sixth chapter uh, about role programming is rewritten and um, for most part but not everything um, adapted from the Swedish version to the English version uh, and start with an introduction with robot programming fundamentals and then I go through online offline programming abstraction levels simulation tools now this is uh, all about industrial robotics and not about robots in general so to say uh, there was a concern about uh, including more examples and being more specific for the details but then i had to go into the specific robot languages and uh, i decided not to do that but i have a thought about in a future edition include more specific data maybe still avoiding specific robot languages more than uh, in a few examples but um, let's see and i will comment that in the end chapter seven is about flexible and configurable systems and um, this is a, a, a new chapter uh, if you compare it to the Swedish version and um, I bring up the concept of flexibility, robot flexibility and the, the usefulness about these parts so to say and then uh, a broader spectrum uh, related to reconfiguring robot systems and manufacturing systems so moving from the robot to the system and then the levels of automation and principles related to that and then um, wrap it up uh, with the final section related to flexibility and operating parameters for a robot cell and um, after I wrote it, I was thinking about it and thought about also to include something about the level of complexity. Now there were some time constraints um, that I had to consider when writing this, so probably that will come in an, in the next edition, so to say, uh, or printing. Chapter 8 is about investment considerations. I bring up the effects of using robots, positive, negative, what to think about related to uh, benefits or yeah, general side effects about what the company had to think about. And that relates to the cost of finance, uh, including um, um, the ana analysis and calculations about these things these matters and then analyzing the investment and um, that is also new um, related to, the, to those things and then uh, chapter 9 is about implementing robot systems I bring up a um, user perspective in this chapter uh, only I would say uh, how do a company or how should they think about when they um, procure uh, or think about uh, automation using robots so setting up a robot automation process the different phases uh, related to, to, to this activity uh, setting up objectives and priorities uh, what do they mean um, risk analysis related to the company uh, about this and implementing robot systems including the selection of a system integrator for designing the robot systems and so forth then chapter 10 is about the robot automation strategy this connects in a way to um, um, an earlier chapter about um, investment considerations in many cases um, I mean, if you divide it, uh, any any company they look at the technical operations uh, on a short period of time, one to two years maybe, something like that, and then they have a mid-term and a long-term strategy, from three to five year, five to ten year, and so forth. And um, if you only go for technical operations it will be very difficult to um, make investments on long-term 
or introduce new technology to the company or to the operations and so forth. So and strategy is really important uh, in order to um, take decisions on uh, more uh, future looking investments. So I put in different views and considerations related to corporate strategies and in particular strategies related to automation and robotics. And the final one is a future outlook, uh, bringing up trends with implementation and use of industrial robots, robot automation in industry with um, some uh, statistics about how many robots are there, so to say, um, and some core challenges related to industrial robotics technology and uh, research and development initiatives in the area. Some comments about updates and future editions. Well, nobody knows actually, but this is a list um, I made myself, so to say, um, about um, some needed things about the future edition. Uh, typically, I don't know, but within a year or two or something like that, when they make the next printing of the book, uh, if it is old, that to say. So from beginning, there was a timeline with fixed dates for, to get things ready. And I made the priorities uh, quite early and there is room for improvements for sure. So in the list is more or less also in, in the priorities, so to say. So there is all there are always some typos and minor editing that will be done without saying. But then there are figures and tables to increase readability. There are a, some examples that could highlight what is said in some parts. It could be in particular a robot system for a specific manufacturing process um, like welding or machine tending or whatever and how such a system could be altered or changed, reconfigured to increase for example some parameters that become important in the future but we don't know when we purchase it or implement it to increase capacity, to extend the flexibility or to integrate with other processes or whatever. And such things could be highlighted in some illustrative, um, uh, in some uh, examples. Uh, some chapters uh, will be extended. For example, I mentioned chapter seven with a section on complexity, which relate to flexibility and um, automation. And um, other parts could introduce examples related to investment, risk analysis, and user requirement specifications. And then I mentioned this with the safety that could be expanded in, in, in some parts or uh, as a separate section to one of the chapters. And then we have new and evolving technologies such as artificial intelligence, sensors, HMI, collaborations, and so forth. So that had to be um, considered uh, at any time, so to say, what will happen with those. Um, and then we have the last part that is, well, if time allows and if that is appropriate or not, I don't know at the moment. But I was thinking actually about uh, robot programming and um, the um, description of robot arms in a way. and. Uh, uh, we have specifically from a practical point of view or, or an applied point of view different parts such as interpolation of paths into traje trajectories that the controller is, um, is generating in real time so to say and um, the way a path is defined and the interpolation is done will affect the motions in different ways. Uh, now I'm not talking about the kinematics as such or dynamics as such because that has to be mentioned as well. It is not now but it should be mentioned but not the uh, mathematics behind it because there are many papers and many books about that. But um, in some cases there are side effects of a choose of interpolation. Um, that will affect the wear or um, uh, lifetime or lifespan of a robot if the motions are not appropriate 
or yeah, driven heavily, so to say, creating um, high accelerations for some path, even if it looks fine, it is not really. So uh, I had a thinking about that to include it uh, at some part between chapter three, the mechanical structure and chapter six, robot programming, probably in a new chapter in that case, because it will take too much space, so to say, to relate to those things. And there are things related to this that have to be taken on board as well, such as how orientations are interpolated. And then we have to introduce the quaternions and interpolation of those and the effect of actuated Moses are interesting in that kind of cases. But uh, that is a concern I have for a future uh, that probably needs a new chapter. And some final words, my hope, of course, that the book will be useful for professionals in the field of industrial robotics and as a textbook in courses or similar at universities. And um, the technology is moving fast forward and the ambition is to make updates for new prints as they will be done. Okay, thank you very much.